Hi, I'm Tony Hoare of VidiSense. This is part of my five minute pruning expert series. Today, I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating how to do cane and spur pruning. Cane and spur pruning is a great way to add extra yield to your vineyard. It's quite a simple process and it's just a matter of being able to select the right canes in the right situation on the vine to provide you with extra potential yield. It's a good way to manage your yield without causing any problems, extra problems with disease or bunch crowding. So where do we begin? I like to start by removing any of the weaker shoots. So that's generally anything that's less than pencil thickness and a short shoot. I like to take those back to one bud. And if they're really short or in a bad position, cleaning them out with a flush cut. Also removing any trunk shoots along the way. Now we've done that, we need to identify our canes that we're going to be using. So as I mentioned before, they're generally at the top of the trunk or the ends of the cordons. As you can see here, we've got some really lovely canes with diameter and cane length that's really suitable for what we want to do. So I probably wouldn't recommend more than two canes in the crown and one cane at either end of the cordons, although the number of canes is really dictated by how much figure you have in the vineyard. So I'll select my canes, which I'm going to use, and it's important that I have a replacement spur at the base of those canes. So the replacement spur forms the cane and replacement spur for the following season. Here's my cane that's going to provide the fruit for me this year. So I'm leaving that reasonably long at this stage and cutting through a bud and leaving a fair bit of height and just tidying up the canes by removing any of last year's pedioles and tendrils. So I've got two lovely canes here. I'm then spurring at the base of those canes. So I've got my replacement spurs at the base of each of those canes. Now I've done that in the crown, I'm going to do this at the end. And you can see here, there's a lovely healthy cane. So I'm going to cut through a bud at the top of that. So here's my cane at the end of this side and then down this end I've got a reasonably good cane here which I can look at using. Now I've done that the rest of the canes can be spurred so it's important not to cut the canes while you're spur pruning. So just remember where they are. And then it's a matter of going through and just spur pruning the remainder of your canes from last year. So now we've done the pruning. So I've got my spurs and I've got my canes and I need to um, wrap my canes onto the wire. So what I like to do is just have the canes long enough so that I can space them so that they're not overlapping because that may lead to bunch congestion later on. So the direction of which way I lay the canes really doesn't matter too much. Having cut through those end buds to leave a nice little lip on them means that I can wrap them down and they they grab themselves quite nicely onto the wire without too much effort. 
it does pay to go through later and probably put a little fine tie on the end of each so they don't do that and spring off and hit you in the head. It will cause problems in the wind later and can come off when you've got fruit on. So you do need to probably put a vine tie on them. So here we are, we've wrapped the canes down and we now have all these extra fruiting buds, um, which potentially will give us extra yield. Not all the buds will generally burst and not all of them will be very fruitful. But what we've done is we've given the vine extra capacity to produce a higher yield at pruning. These buds can also be used, or these canes, sorry, can also be used for crop thinning later on. If you decide that you don't want that extra yield, then a good time around Verizon, very early Verizon, is to go through and cut those canes and that will have helped devigorate the vine, which will give you some benefit for the extra fruit, the fruit that's remaining. And you'll be able to thin without having to go through and remove individual bunches. Another handy use for using those canes with spurs. That's it, that's spur and cane pruning. I hope you give it a try. Cheers. Thank you.